Marissa Roberto, everybody. <laughs> Yay. Live on the internet. No pressure, no stress. Tell me uh, yeah. how many shows you make now because I, I can't keep up with you. I know. I just, I'm like, and I have the brilliant idea last week and I'm, I'm going to write a new show. And then I'm, of course, I'm up till three in the morning just writing the script for it. So I just launched a new show today. Uh, what? On Squad State. So okay. uh, Squad is, is live right now. Um, I produce a show called Unmuted, which is basically, um, pardon the interruption if you like sports. Okay, um, pardon yep. the interruption, but with a mute button and with esports. Um, so it's just Brody and I arguing, which we do every day anyway. Right. Um, and we have a mute button to uh, shut the other one up for 30 seconds if needed. And then uh, a show called Esports in 30 that we do uh, every, I host one every Friday. And then now a new show where we're just sipping tea and we're gossiping about all the drama happening in esports because there is a lot and they put it all on their Twitter. These kids have no filter. Um, so it's called No Filter. <laughs> and then I host a show for Sports Center, so TSN Sports Center on their Instagram. Um, every morning I just go there and I shoot before I go to my other studio. It's three minutes, sports. Um, just a lot of memes, just like the way I want to ingest sports. Three minutes on Instagram, TSN stories every weekday. We um, uh, have got a big show to go to next week. Yeah. And how many E3s is this for you now? How many have you gone to? Uh, I was trying to do the math because that first E3 was, I just told a story about it on Twitter because it was not my, my favorite. Um, but every other one with EP was amazing. Yep. Um, I think it was, I think it's, this is my sixth year or seventh. Seventh, very good. Possibly. Awesome. Um, yeah, that are, first year are, was not with you guys, and then the, the rest were with you guys, so it was Are good. you so working like, for Xbox or Squad State or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. So a, I and Sports Xbox. Center, too? Are you doing some? No, no. <laughs> um, I am going for a squad. Uh, we're doing some stuff with Walmart Canada, and... Uh, um, some some stuff for Xbox, and then I'm doing a couple hits, I think, for ESPN because they're doing some stuff there as well. Oh, it's fantastic! It's just one of those things where it's like, oh, do you have time? I mean, you just kind of like try to squeeze it into your schedule while you're you go to your appointments, and um, and then yeah, just after there's like a Fortnite uh, thing happening after that, where it's like their their esports thing, and then uh, there's going to be a Call of Duty esports thing happening in Anaheim just after that. So I'm trying to just like get to as much as I can while we're there. Are you staying for the Call of Duty esports weekend then? Yes, uh, I'm going to Anaheim because that's going to be in Anaheim, so it's about an hour away. Very good, very good. Okay, so um, I know that you're big into the esports world right now. Is everything that you're excited about it at uh, E3 related to esports, or is there stuff that you're uh, super psyched for? I know that there's an Animal Crossing game. I don't know if you want to talk about <laughs> Animal Crossing, but here's your chance right here. That is literally at the very top of my list, Animal Crossing. If, uh, but the thing is, like. Nintendo keeps doing this thing where, like, every single time they show me a Nintendo Direct, it's always been disappointing to me. And I think it's just because they haven't shown me any Animal Crossing at all. And right. everybody in chat is just like, just a little taste of it. Just give, just get. I don't care if it's like Isabel just saying hi. And she's not in Smash. It's just Isabel prepping for the new game that we're getting into. Like, I just want something. So I feel like this is going to be the year, but I say that all the time. So. Uh, this should be, but this should be the year. I feel like you know something, Vic, because you did your pre E three stuff. Uh, well, Nintendo <laughs> wasn't there, but uh, they have oh. shown a little bit of everything else that's coming, except for Animal Crossing in a, in a big <laughs> sort of direct kind of deal. Uh, maybe that's because we're wondering what what are they going to surprise us with, yeah. and maybe it's going to be what we're going to be doing in Animal Crossing. Would that make you very happy? I would be so delighted because you know every year Nintendo has a themed booth, so. Yes. Um, last year it was Smash, I believe, Smash Ultimate, and the year before that was Super Mario um, Odyssey. Yep. So I'm like, I don't and know. And Zelda what it before be. that. The Zelda before that, yep. So I don't know what it would be this year, but they have to be on brand and on theme. So, uh, oh my gosh, if it was an Animal Crossing Wonderland, I would just cancel all my appointments <laughs> and stay at the Dead Out the whole time, even for Xbox. Like, I would make them come to me at Nintendo. <laughs> So, so uh, yeah, that, that that's going to go over so well at Xbox. But actually, uh, Xbox they're publishes on Nintendo now. It's like uh, they're 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 nice to everybody. They play with everybody. Exactly. Does that make it's it awesome. more fun for you working with Xbox? You can talk about anything oh, yeah. now. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and, and it was always that way. Like they told me from the beginning. Like, listen, j I mean, obviously we don't cover a lot of Sony stuff here, but they knew that I loved Nintendo. They know that my favorite console is my Switch. I always talk about it. I always have games that I'm playing on it. So, um, no, they were always. Uh, they, and even people that work with 
Xbox here in Canada, they tweet about like PlayStation games they get. They talk about other stuff. It's just kind of like the Sony people that don't talk about other things. But I feel like Xbox right. is like, welcoming and loving. And See, she's still throwing together. a little shade at PlayStation people. She still managed to get a little dig in there. Some good work there. That's <laughs> nice. But I, but you know me, Vicky. You know that I was kind of always that way with, yeah. with PlayStation. Don't, don't you remember my PS4? It would never work for me. Why? <laughs> Why? Like, this what? segment brought to you by Xbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I think that's great. And, I, and that's the truth of it, too. And that's what uh, Jeff was able to do at the uh, awards, uh, you know, when he brought all of the three big bigwigs up on stage. And it, it's, uh, I think it's kind of the beginning of a new era for video games in a way, right? And Xbox is embodying that. Do you know what they're going to show us? Do you have any, uh, you have any secrets? Now's your chance. They they honestly keep everything from me. I they treat me like a fan. Like I don't sign any NDAs. I don't. They don't know. I don't know anything until I get there. Um, oh. They did say. I know they said that there's going to be 14 um, first party titles they were going to be talking about on stage. So that's very exciting. I always get hyped for those pressers and the yep. fact that we only really have theirs as the big boy uh, coming to play at E3 this year is also exciting. That's the only thing that we could really like fully get hyped about and fully look forward to is sitting. Um, you know, in that theater and taking it all in versus, I mean, obviously we have the other boys there too, but it's not, there's no Sony, there's no Nintendo now. And so what, like, when you heard that, when Sony wasn't going to be doing a presser, what did you think? Uh, it's it's heartbreaking. And it, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I don't think of E3 as a, just a way to hype the games. I think of it as a way to get the whole business together to yes. kind of share the enthusiasm for the medium and to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bit of a, you know, there's media around that, which I think, engenders positive uh, stories around this medium. And I think the more that we separate it, by, even, even by the geography that Xbox is not on the show floor and they're in the theater and EA puts their press conference on a Saturday and then you take you know, Sony right out of that equation, I think every time we rip it apart like that, it has a little less meaning. And I feel mm -hmm. like it's, uh, it's kind of in a treacherous place right now. It feels like, you know, very fragile. It feels like it, there, it could disappear, and I don't want it to. I, feel, I want it to be kind of like, uh, it needs to evolve, it needs to change, and they're trying with the fan stuff, but I feel like um, it should be kind of like the Cannes Film Festival, you know? It should be a chance to, uh, you know, celebrate all these people that, that uh, dream up these big things and make magic for us, you know? Oh yeah, of course. I know, but then you gotta think of the money. Like you gotta think of oh, how I know. much money they're spending to do all this stuff. And um, I, I understand Sony not doing. Like I, I figured it was gonna happen. The thing is, like Nintendo, we always make fun of Nintendo <laughs> because like they they're crazy and they do crazy things. And like they're not doing a press anymore. Where we were all just all so upset about it. They weren't gonna do a press anymore. What were they thinking? Yeah. Um, and then every presser before that, they would just it'd be laughing stock because they came out with like Wii Music or whatever it was that we all laughed at. Um, but they've always set a trend. They've always set a trend. So the fact that Nintendo did that years ago, we kind of knew that the dominoes would fall eventually for these other uh, big conferences because there's so much work to put together. Like, right. you know, putting together big stage shows. Like, it takes so much time, so much manpower um, to put these things together. And then all people do is troll it online. So, like, you know, <laughs> why bother almost? Yeah, except it, 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 it can be worth it. You know, you can look at the business and sense of it, but it can be worth it. And I think uh, uh, it, it, it's like a week where everybody has their eyes and their attention on this business. And, and yeah. I think we need that, you know, otherwise it's it's scattered all over the place, which I think this sort of fractious world that we're in with video games is part of the problem. You know, it's really hard to know what's new and what's out there and, you know, what's coming up, oh. what to be excited about, because it's so spread out all over the place right now. Yeah, it's true, actually. I know, we're becoming more and more secluded, even though we have this wonderful thing called the internet that can connect us all, but we all just separate, we all do our own thing, and we all yes. just become, you know, ingrained. Even, like, in the esports world, the the other games don't, like, hang out with each other. Like, the players on each side don't play with each other. They just stick with their game, and they live in their own bubbles, and it's not, like, it's all just separated. So, um, yep. yeah, no, you're right. I do, that's the thing I look forward to most now with E3. It's not so much the um, games that we're gonna see, because it's always just so much, like it's a sensory overload. You're trying to get as much in as possible and see as many people as possible. Um, but I look forward to the people that you see, because this is the one time, it's really, it's, it's geek Christmas, we always say it, but we yep. get to just see each other and like hug and to have a couple of drinks and talk about our lives and the games that we're playing and get excited about the new things that we're going to get to play 
Um, yeah. So it keep it does keep you young, that's for sure. But it, the more well, I, it, the more time you go, you feel older. It creates a roadmap of the things to look forward to and the work that you're going to do if you're in this business. So let's talk a little bit about that. So we know you want Animal Crossing. What else are you <laughs> hoping for or hyped for? I know you love Skyrim. Do you want uh, I, a new Elder Scrolls announcement? Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I was talking about this with one of my interns, and he's like, they're not going to give you anything else. I'm like, what What are you talking about? They, they teased us last year with just letting us know that it was happening. They're making it. Something's going on. So we're definitely going to get a trailer, right? Like, we have to get something. Because that Oblivion was my first experience with Elder Scrolls, and that completely changed my life as a gamer because I, oh, like, I was a Nintendo girl through and through like there was no it was just platforming it was mario it was my animal crossing that was it so um for me to have experienced that and know what a true rpg is and, and really live in a world like that um blew my mind so skyrim was just like the next level of i am taking work off and i am <laughs> staying at home and i'm living in my pjs and i'm living in this world so that I was wait. work marissa <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that was what we were doing. We were working on reviewing those things. Yeah, it's that's all good. That, that's true. I don't think I was. I don't think I was supposed to review that game, though, Vic. I think I was just. Oh right. Uh, it could, could have been Stephen Roger. I think we all reviewed that game, didn't we? Reviewed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It came out on every single platform, so probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so but we got we got new that. Elder Scrolls. We got new Animal Crossing for you. What else do you want to see? New yeah. uh, Uncharted. Um, I know you got a crush on Nathan Drake. I do have a question, Ethan Drake, but I don't... Um, oh, we're not going to see so Uncharted. Look, I made the boo-boo right there. There's no PlayStation. No PlayStation uh, for you. Yeah, but they're still going to do like a nope. direct or whatever they... They're not nope. going not to? Not, nothing to do with E3. And here's the, here's the saddest part about this. Nobody from Sony is allowed to go to E3. Nobody that works at Sony in any of its PlayStation divisions is going to be at E3, even at, to support the other developers or the, uh, to, do, to do some espionage to see whatever. They're, they're not going to be there, which is incredible, right? Like, it's so hard to comprehend that. That's a massive chunk of the business, you know? We used to spend hours in the That's PlayStation not, that booth. That can't be real. That can't be real. That's okay. Real. All right. No, Vic, I'm just making it up. Crazy. No, it's That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I heard I that. that. Okay, okay, but it's got to be because they're 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 doing their own thing, the PlayStation Experience, right? So they're yeah. just gonna segregate and do yes. that, and just shun E3 and shun everybody that goes to E3. And then the thing is, like, they're gonna pull so many fanboys away from E3. That's the saddest part because so many fanboys only That's care right. about Sony. That's right. That's what Disney did with the D23 and not going to Comic Con. And now Warner yeah. Brothers isn't at. Uh, Hall H this year at Comic Con, and it sounds like they're working on something too. This is what I don't want. I want all the game companies to get together and reveal stuff at the same time. It's exciting because they don't it's reveal at, at PAX, you know, and Gamescom is after E3, so it's not really like a big news thing. But E3, it's like, push, the world's cameras are trained, right? Yeah, it's true. I don't know. Maybe it's just it's just um, the eventuality of these types of things. Because, like, even think about getting a hotel during E3 right now. Like, they're, the prices are astronomical. Like, everything just inflates. So it can only inflate, and that this world can only inflate so much before it bursts in some way. Uh, so maybe this was just always meant to happen. Like maybe mm. this is the way it's supposed to be. Not supposed to be, but this is the way life kind of evolves, and now we're going to just all be separate and sad. Okay. That's very Jedi of you. I yeah, like that. it's just very... Yeah. Sorry, I'm, my outlook is very bleak. <laughs> Jamie's got a question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jamie's asking if this is going to be a way for other game developers to kind of get a, a little bit more of attention out there. Certainly, this is Xbox's opportunity to not drop the ball in any way, shape, or form, right? This is like, here you go, open door, knock our yeah. socks off, you know? Sure. Um, and Nintendo's like got that opportunity as well. Um, yeah. But I, I, you know what I think... Sony will stealth release some press releases or, you know, they, they will say, especially after uh, we hear all of the X Xbox announcements, we might hear a couple of things about the PlayStation 5. Yeah. Not the big reveal. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I, I do like that, that point, though, only because it, it does, this is an opportunity for other developers, like I'm talking indie developers, anybody like just kind of that falls on the, by the wayside when we think right. about E3, when we think about the big publishers. Um, you know, if it's not Square Enix and it's not 
you know, EA or um, EA even broke off too. Like they're doing their own thing. So um, yeah. it's the, it's the little guys that need to get attention too. But uh, like I have to be honest, when I'm making my appointments for E3, I only have time for the big guys and the you know the smaller guys just kind of like they almost disappear. So yes, this is a good time. Like maybe with all the big boys away, maybe we'll still get together and we can still celebrate games. But in this like for yeah. the games that don't get the attention they should. Well, and the other challenge of it all, too, is how much all the media, uh, you know, sites and channels and different outlets out there are struggling to keep up with all of this as well. It's just there is a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of little companies with and indie developers and smaller titles and stuff, mm -hmm. and you just can't get my schedule is packed. I do oh have uh, a, an EA visit for the Jedi Fallen Order. So I cannot oh. wait. I think I get some hands on with that. So that's, that's I'm glad that EA brought that to the convention center because the, the word on the street was EA Play was going to wrap up. That was it. But they yeah. are bringing Star Wars to E3. So I'm psyched about that. Yeah, you got to have Star Wars. I know you love that. Yes. It's not, it's not a game that I play, but I know you love it. And yeah. I'm happy for you. Are you <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emra. What what <laughs> what other thing? What other thing that we don't know that you love? Are you excited for? That we don't know. Plants, that I love. Plants vs uh, Zombies. <laughs> Is EA gonna show up for Plants vs Zombies Garden no. Warfare? No. Garden Warfare three. Yeah, Ruby likes <laughs> Plants vs Zombies too. Yeah, no, it's not not yet. Uh, no, it's not. I know it's not gonna happen. Uh, I mean, I was excited about um, a new Ori. So hopefully we will, I mean, maybe get some more hands on, t hands on time with that. I don't know, like, uh, it's tough for me to say things that I, it's so crazy for me because I know we always need to like look forward and what we're excited about, what we're going to get to see. But like, I still have to finish Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Like, you know, like I still have games that I need to finish and everyone's like listing games that we're so excited about. Yes, yes, yes. But like, guys, what, what, I, Half of these games, I haven't even played. You have a bunch of PlayStation 3 games I notice you need that's to finish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my PS3. That's my Look PS4. at those Wii U titles collecting dust oh, right there. Oh, you got to oh, no. get to that Zombie U, Marissa. What's happening? <laughs> You're excited about Zombie U at E3 2019. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know. The, okay, listen. My other side is on Nintendo. Don't worry. But, uh, yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't touched really half of those and a lot of them are downloadable now and did you hear that this um the minecraft story mode that telltale made is not even going to be available anymore if you didn't download it if you paid for it you can't even get it anymore if you didn't download it onto your console like that is yeah. so sad that these yes. developers are, are shutting down and we yep. don't even get to experience their art anymore like something that was so beautiful how could it how could a company you, that made you, such beautiful things you, you know what would help help that if there was more attention on video game makers at a thing like E3, where you put all the cameras and you get everybody talking about how cool video games are. Right, but then how, I don't know, but then why aren't people buying games? It's, we're gonna get into a whole thing here, but like, is it because they're just watching on Twitch? Like, I don't know. I, I, think, I, don't know. I think we're in a transitional phase right now. The business is sort yeah. of morphing into something else and, and mm -hmm. uh, there's gonna be a lot of streaming solutions. Our buddy Jade is working over at Stadia yeah. and, uh, they're trying to disrupt yeah. the whole business and the, the business and Microsoft is trying to disrupt the whole business. You know, with Sony. I, with Sony. With Sony. With Sony, yeah. I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out about being able to play these console like we'll probably play you I see you've got the Halo collection up there. I, I think we'll be playing the next Halo on whatever screen we want. We won't That'll even so need to have an Xbox. I'm, I am actually very good thing you brought up about Halo because I am excited about a new Halo. Um, for all the for, like the shooters out there, Halo is the only one that I could really pick up and get into and just get the mechanics of. I used to like not be able to control um, or just get too I don't know I guess excited. You know you're like panicked because you want to make sure you're doing the right thing. Um, Halo was the first one that I could get into and really love and understand. And so I'm excited about that. But I'm also excited about the Halo scene because it's it's really I don't know the light has been so dim on it for so long now because there hasn't been anything truly new um, for Master Chief, for the esports scene. It really needs it, it needs life. And um, this new Halo is gonna do that for them and I'm excited about that. Also new Gears, um, that's exciting too. And the team that makes Gears is incredible. Oh, I think so. they're gonna rock, man. I, I, they yeah. killed it on four and they were <laughs> relatively safe with the scope, but I think all bets are off and they're gonna make something incredible with the next one. Uh, yeah, how agree. awesome, this is from uh, megascorcher.com. I don't know if you know them, uh, but it says, how, how awesome is TSN? <laughs> um, this is somebody that works at TSN right now. Maybe, this might be your boss asking <laughs> how awesome TSN is. <laughs> um, TSN is amazing. I love it because I get to go there 
in the morning when it's really quiet, there's nobody in the newsroom. Um, I'm just kind of like one of the first people in there with my producer and the boys from Bar Down and the boys from Bar Down are hilarious. So we just get to like be together in the newsroom where they shoot Sports Center, but it's just us and we're, we're just doing the show, putting it together quickly. And then I'm like, hey, bye guys, gotta go, thanks so much. And I just peace out by, you know, like 10, 45, 11. And then I get to see the show put together on Instagram at 3 p.m. So I freaking love it. I'm, just, I'm over the moon with TSN. I, I always <laughs> said you should be doing some sports stuff. So I'm very happy that that's yeah. happening for you. Got a question from uh, Blair Farrell. Uh, do you follow any of the FGC esports? Yes, of course. Oh my God, FGC. I love, so fighting game community. Um, I'm actually just, I have it on my screen right now uh, because it's FGC day on Squad State. Um, so I love FGC, I think they need more love. And if we're talking about E3 and bringing it back to E3, there is going to be a Smash Ultimate competition, but the FGC community is like the, the Melee community, the Ultimate community is upset because Nintendo never gives them any love. They always just expect that they're gonna take care of themselves. And they just showed this too at E3 because they're actually going to be playing in a tournament. They invite players to come play in an ultimate tournament, but they play with items on. And if you play with items on, then it no longer is that competitive action. Like you just have the, the, the like the items kind of just ruin it for competition. So uh, they're not happy about it, but we are gonna see some players there, which is exciting. But I love the FGC because they're so grassroots and they're all like, they're always hype. Awesome. Always hype. Got another yeah. one from, um, uh, where was it? It was Sword and Shield. Oh, Blair, f uh, no, Blade Blur. What are your thoughts on uh, Sword and Shield? Uh, did you watch the uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield Direct today? I didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it yet. Oh, my God. Spoilers. She's waiting for the eSports version of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. What did, what did you think when they announced Pokemon Sleep? Pardon me? What did you think when they announced Pokemon Sleep? Did you yeah, see I that? I think it's, uh, it's... You know, it's about turning it into a life that you just can't leave, you know? <laughs> I know. I, I, who would have predicted the this the rampant success of Pokemon as a brand to begin oh with? Oh, my goodness. It's just infiltrated. And, and, like, it cycles back in and out, and it just keeps perpetuating. It's incredible. What a story the whole Pokemon I thing know. is, you know? It's amazing. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And people yeah. are still playing Pokemon Go. Like, I know. It's massive. Every day. Millions of people. And, I know. And look at how influential that game is. Jamie's got another question. Ah, for game casting, what skills have you learned along the way that you would recommend to people? So you're uh, talking about uh, calling out games and casting when you're watching yeah. an esports tournament? Uh, yeah, I guess it just depends. It works the same with um, you know sports commentators. Um, it just you need to have a wealth of knowledge, but also like little stories that you can share in between. So you need to have you need to decide if you want to be a commentator and like call the action happening, or if you want to do color, which is like someone that takes their time, is patient and then waits for an opening um, in the casting to jump in with a little anecdote. And then, but it also, comes, it's, it's mostly just patience because you might have a little quip that you want to use, but the cast is still going and, you, and you, it, you've missed your opportunity to use it. You've got to let it go. It's a lot of like patience and letting things go. Uh, that's, that's my biggest advice for that, but also just practicing, like watching a tournament. If, you, if you're into FGC, just there's so many tournaments happening all the time on Twitch. Literally just watch it, put the volume completely down and call it yourself and record yourself and play it back and then try to get better each time. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, and this is the last question. This one's from uh, the Clax One Two Three. Do you think that Cyberpunk will be out in 2019? Oh my gosh, that's the one I want to talk about. What do you think? Oh, look at that. That's awesome. That's worth like nine thousand dollars right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I saw people were selling right yeah. after E3. I'm like, are you crazy? Yeah. First of all, that's disrespectful because they gave this to us. And I know. Perfect. It's art. Yes. Right? Yep. Um, no, I love this girl so much. I'm so excited. I think CD Projekt Red, I, their development team is absolutely incredible. Yep. Um, just getting a little taste of it. We had like an hour demo we sat through uh, last year. So um, it, uh, anything from them, honestly, I'm, I'm over the moon with that. I'm so excited about that game. It, it won't be out this year. We get another uh, hour long demo this year, I think. Uh, but it's And I don't think there's any hands on either. So if they don't give you hands on, usually it doesn't come out in that same year. Uh, but we're all psyched about that, and we are so psyched that uh, you are killing it in Toronto. We miss you very much ah. in Vancouver. You'd be sitting right here, by the way, <laughs> right here, every day on EP Live if you were out in Vancouver. Uh, ah. But uh, when you come back, we'll have you on in 
the flesh in person. Yeah, I would love that. I would love All right. that so much. Thank and, you so much uh, for having me. And I'll definitely come and hang out with you guys uh, the next time I'm in Toronto. Uh, yeah, sh- of course. Shout out to everybody on your teams. Uh, yes. Uh, wait, my teams? Yeah, on your yeah. teams. Oh my you have God. many. Yes, for sure. Guys, please hit up TSN's Instagram like every day at 3 p.m. Also, uh, Squad State on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Squad State every, every weekday. There she is plugging away. That's great. <laughs> and I, I will see you next week in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. Thank you, Marissa Roberto. Big Thank round of applause so much, to our friend. Yes, <laughs> great to see you. Okay, everybody, that's going to do it for our episode of EP Live today. Thank you so much for watching. We had two guests, two fantastic guests, and Marissa's just going to be hanging out in the background there. It's awesome right there. Uh, But we will be back on Friday with a brand-new EP Live for you, (laughs) so please come back. And until then, make sure you play forever.